Good afternoon. Uh, it is uh, three o'clock, and at this point in time, we are just waiting uh, for our library trustees to be able to join us uh, in the uh, virtual platform. And uh, I see that I have uh, uh, one trustee that is able to join, so we will just wait a bit so that we uh, get a few more people so that we can have quorum. So. Uh, so Nancy, thank you for joining us, and uh, we will just uh, wait a few moments to see if we can get a few more people joining us. Thank you. And I'm just going to uh, check my uh, emails and uh, my phone just to see if there's any trustee that is having difficulty trying to log on. Uh, so I'm just going to look at that uh, quickly. For those of you who are library staff that are uh, already on our uh, virtual platform of our meeting, thank you all for uh, waiting patiently. Uh, we look forward to hearing your reports in the latter part of our uh, <coughs> meeting. so far Pardon? only Nancy so far uh, we do we have Nancy and we have Meg and okay. obviously we have father William okay well we have so we have so four we need, we need six mm -hmm. we need six and okay. if there's any uh, members of the public that are watching right now we are uh, not starting our meeting until we actually do have a quorum of our trustees uh, which would be a total of six so Sometimes technology is very easy and helpful, and sometimes technology is a little bit of a challenge for everyone to try to get onto this virtual platform. So for those of you who are able to join us, thank you. We're just going to wait and see if we can get a few more people. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you, Mary Lynn. And uh, at this time, we are just waiting for one more trustee, and uh, we will, at that point, we will have quorum, and uh, we will begin our meeting. So thank you all for patiently waiting. It's a great time to reread your minutes, I don't know, for the third time, <laughs> but... And uh, Sydney, since uh, if since you are on the line um, at this time, is there uh, any uh, trustee that has uh, shared that they are unable to make the meeting? I just want to make sure that uh, six people were planning to attend today.
All right, thank you. All right, perfect. This thing, she's on my schedule too. So um, at this time, we do have our uh, quorum of six. So uh, we can uh, go ahead and begin. So I will uh, call our meeting to order at this time. We do have a quorum of six. And uh, it's not very often that I get to do the next thing on the agenda, which is to do a very warm welcome uh, to our new trustee, Reverend William uh, Bolson, who is to my right, uh, more than six feet away to my right. Uh, but uh, if we can all just extend a warm welcome to him for joining our trustee uh, board of Mead Public Library. Uh, Library Director Garrett Erickson and I had a, a wonderful tour of the library with him yesterday, as well as a meeting in which I officially uh, uh, had him take the oath to be the trustee. He is actually uh, completing the uh, term of um, John Motiska, who uh, stepped down in the summer, uh, in uh, last summer. Uh, so he is uh, very kindly stepping in to complete that term, and uh, we uh, hope that he's able to continue on to a future term. But uh, it was very so. nice to meet you, and, Thank you. and uh, in the near future, when it's a little easier for all of us to get together, we can uh, uh, learn a little bit more about his areas of expertise and his interests. I can safely say that he was absolutely wowed by Mead Public Library, mm -hmm. and uh, just had uh, a lot of wonderful comments to share that I wish I had v recorded so that we, we could uh, share it with all of you. But uh, it'll be wonderful having yet another um, member so that we're at a full uh, table of 10 uh, for this library board. So at this time, if someone, uh, if everyone would like to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And uh, next on our agenda is uh, public comments, uh, which we uh, do not have uh, anyone here at this time. And uh, Moving on then to 1.5, if someone would like to make a motion to approve our minutes uh, from, I'm just trying to get the date here, from uh, January 28th, 2021. Would someone like to make a motion? Mary Lynn Donahue made a motion. Would someone like to second? Meg Albring seconded. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next up, I'm just trying to get the <laughs> buttons here. Uh, under 1.6, um, I just wanted to take a moment uh, to uh, share with you uh, a future communication I am in the process of writing. Uh, in my role of, of president of Mead Public Library <laughs> Board of Trustees. Uh, many of you are probably aware that uh, recently the Wisconsin uh, Department of Health Services announced additional uh, members of our community that would be eligible for phase 1C of vaccination starting on March 1st. This is incredible positive, positive news for teachers and child care workers and uh, you know, uh, people who really do work with uh, so many members of our public, and they really provide such a valuable um, service for the education of the <coughs> members of our community. Uh, interestingly for me, uh, was 
reading a little bit more about those who were qualified for 1C uh, in that phase 1-1C one, is, the, is the fact that despite the Center for Disease Control's recommendation, uh, library workers were not included in that very important group. And I do know that their state professional organization, the Wisconsin Library Association, uh, submitted, uh, I believe, over 80 pages of testimony from all the libraries across the state of Wisconsin uh, because they feel in their role they are quite similar to the retail, educational support staff, and social services that are offered to our citizens in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, uh, my, in my role of president of the library board, I am planning to send a letter to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services as well as our local public health department, as well as Governor Evers, just sharing my concern that our library workers are essential workers in our community. And we have been so impressed by their courage and their dedication in continuing to offer vital services to our citizens uh, that have been so essential during this uh, pandemic. And we've been managed to keep our library open uh, for many months, even though other libraries in the states uh, were not able to because we knew how important our services were to our citizens. So I just wanted to let all of you be aware that uh, that is something that I'm just going to be writing as president of this board so that they're aware that there are trustees that are quite concerned with uh, the decision to not include library workers in this important classification of people who can now start receiving vaccinations uh, starting March 1st. So I just wanted to make sure all of you were aware. Um, so with that, uh, we can move on to, unless there was anything else, Garrett, that you just wanted to share with me. Uh, ne next up would be committee reports, and it looks like there is, for once, <laughs> Nothing listed. Oh my goodness, I think I should highlight mm. that. So we're gonna move right along to items for discussion and possible action. Uh, 3.1, the DPI annual report. And I'll take this one, Maeve. Um, this is something that is required for us uh, from the public library standpoint. Each year that we submit our annual statistics as well as financial report to the Department of Public Instruction, which oversees libraries and schools. Um, and so you should have gotten an email with the, uh, the, the version that was turned in to our system, the Monarch system, and then they take a look at it and then it does go on to the state. However, I do need to get approval from the trustees on this. So um, I guess is hopefully everybody got a chance to take a look at it and if they had any questions, please let me know right now. <clears throat> So just looking over, uh, any trustees have any questions or uh, comments for Garrett Erickson? But like the report uh, it was pretty standard. Was it was actually unique this year in the sense there's a whole bunch of questions about how we handled COVID services. So like for instance, on the first page, uh, uh, it talks about you know limited service and so on. That was due to COVID. So this was a, a fairly unique. Um, there were several questions that were unique on here compared to past years. The rest of it is very similar, though. Wonderful. So at this time, we would need someone to make a motion. Mm -hmm. So, up. Oh, yep. Mary Lynn Donahue has moved. Oh, oh maybe you have a question. Thank you, Marilyn. All right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, would someone like to make a motion? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so it has been moved. Thank you, Mary Lynn. Would someone like to make a second for this DPI report? Kyle Welton makes a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries, thank you. 3.2, National Library Week, April 4th through 10th. 
Thanks, thanks, Maeve. Um, on this one, we are asking once again that uh, during National Library Week that we can provide amnesty for late fines to patrons that bring their materials in. So uh, this does not cover replacement costs. If they were to lose an item, it really just allows them to bring in items that are late and we would um, not charge them. So it's a great opportunity to get a lot of materials back and to build some goodwill in the community. Who would like to make a motion for this uh, idea? Meg Elbring would like to move. Is there a second? And Nancy seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries, thank you. 3.3, Mead Internal Committee Structure. So this was something Maeve brought up in the fall that she would be very curious to hear about how we <laughs> make decisions and bring things to the library board. And so I thought about how we wanted to do this and I thought back to a book that I read, I actually have to hold up, it's called, um, the Primal, it's called Primal Leadership from Daniel Goleman, if you've heard of him. So Daniel Goleman uh, was the one who wrote Emotional Intelligence as well. It's a very good book, a classic business book about leadership. Um, in the book, Goldman talks about four positive types of leadership. There's the visionary, there's the coach. Another style is called the affiliative, affiliative in which is sort of a person that connects uh, emotionally with coworkers and, and subordinates. And then there's the Democrat, the Democratic style of that, that type of manager who goes out and gets a lot of input and is very interested in building consensus on ideas before uh, following through. And so I think a, a lot of what we do at the library has been put in place by Melissa Prentice, um, our, our uh, public services manager. And Melissa, to, to think about her and her style is very uh, much a democratic, uh, a democratic or democracy style leader. She really puts together uh, committees and tries to get input from all of her, uh, the people that work with her and really build consensus and get a lot of, just really builds uh, a lot, gets a lot of input. And so I thought that was really positive for her and so what you're gonna see is a document that we attach to board docs. It's uh, quite a few number, uh, there's quite a few committees that she now has. And it's really a change from when uh, both her and I started in 2013 and 2014 when we had, a, we had a much bigger management staff, quite honestly, but the staff also didn't have the input. We didn't have the processes in place. So um, kudos to Melissa and I know now Cheryl as well is working with her on even expanding that further. So I'm gonna actually let the two of them talk about the document that, that is attached and shows all the different committees that we have within the library.
kind of manage the decision making with that really does come from the staff members. So um, that's sort of the broad overview. Any questions about that? So just looking at everyone's uh, faces, I, mm. I, uh, I, I just personally wanted to share that, you know, I, I think we've all recognized that there are so, there are so many steps that need to be taken to, to make all of the programming and all of the aspects of the library work so flawlessly. And now we've just been given a glimpse of how much work <laughs> and, and the structure that's been put in place. And I have to tell you, leave it to the librarians to not only give us a written document that lays it out perfectly, but then they give us a visual diagra diagram at the end. So, you know, I'm a visual learner, so I in particular just really enjoyed being able to visualize how this all works. Uh, and so I really thank you for taking the time for trying to educate us a little bit more about how you really get so many things accomplished um, every year. Uh, just looking at my uh, trustees to see if anyone else has something that they'd like to ask or um, I can just tell you from the head nods, Melissa, and some of the uh, glances, everyone is just really impressed with what you and Cheryl have put together with Garrett to try to you know, manage uh, our library. No wonder we keep m meeting our vision and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> mission all the time. So with that, I will uh, say thank you, and we can move on then to 3.4, which is uh, a different topic, COVID service responses. Yes, and so what we actually, um, to step back, I guess, since October, we have closed down the second and third floor, and that was really due to uh, some staff getting COVID and then the folks that were interacting with them having to quarantine as well, and we really just didn't feel like we could provide the staffing levels that we needed to keep the library open. And so Melissa's compromise uh, rather than closing the doors and just providing curbside was to perhaps we can go down to one floor for a while and uh, see how everything pans out. And we've done that and managed to keep the first floor open and still provide access to all the uh, services such as computers and so on and it's worked out pretty well. Um, some people of course wanna peruse the, the collections themselves and that's understood. Um, we're at a point now, uh, I guess I, I've been asking the managers when, when would be a good time that we can go back to opening up those other floors with still somewhat limited hours, but when can we open up those floors? And uh, Melissa and Cheryl did come to me um, a month or two ago and said, I think we should set a target date. And so they had sent, set the target date of March 1st to open second and third floor up. And we have been monitoring everything and the staff have been really responsible at home and, and we've got very few cases, to be honest, of COVID within the staff. So we're feeling that um, not only are we doing the right things at home, but obviously our safety protocols at work are doing well as, as well. And we're ready to open the second and third floors. So I guess uh, with that, maybe, I don't know if Melissa has anything else to add to that. They're still, we're still concerned about staffing, quite honestly. We're worried that you know, if we open up that something could happen and we could have a few people out and then we'd be uh, back to first floor. But uh, Melissa, do you have anything to add? Uh, not too much, just to say that um, I agree it would be great if, if this all, it's all smooth sailing from here on out. Um, and I think that was one of our bigger concerns with um, reopening those floors too early is would we would we see that post-holiday surge? Would that impact our staff? Would we then be having to close down again? And that causes a lot of chaos for the public and for um, managing a schedule and that sort of thing um, on the staff end of things. So uh, that March 1st date um, was really trying to give us enough time to see how that all played out. And then of course, you know, having a couple of floors closed, we were doing projects on those floors like painting and moving things around. So. Uh, planning to get everything back in order takes a little bit of time as well. Um, but I can say that um, by and large, uh, the staff are excited to get the rest of the library open again. Um, it's, it's really difficult when we know that there are things that patrons need and want to do on those other floors and to have to say, no, we can't do that right now. Um, so I think everyone's really um, excited about getting back to some level of normalcy and routine. Um, and of course, 
Um, I think that we've been doing this for almost a year now to some extent. Um, I think folks are more confident too in uh, the safety protocols that we are taking and that they're taking at home. Uh, and there's a little bit less anxiety around that as well. This does still mean we're on, on, on limited hours and it also, uh, we're not opening up, for instance, the meeting spaces. Um, this would just be the main areas. Uh, the quiet study area on second floor would remain closed, but we would open up uh, basically a lot more computers on the second floor and, and people can uh, peruse the collections themselves on second and third. So we think that's a huge benefit. Um, and then we'll continue to, to watch what the health department recommends and so on to move to the next step down the road. But we think this is a really positive development for the community. Do you, do you have a sense for uh, how you're going to share this information to the public? Are you gonna kind of do a soft opening before you know, really sharing on social media, all three floors are now open, or what are your thoughts for how that's gonna be communicated with our public? I think the last time this, uh, this governing body met, that was the sort of, uh, the, the, the directive was sort of a soft opening just to make sure everything went well. And so we'll open up uh, Monday and hope that everything goes well and kind of play it by ear and then um, uh, continue to promote as it seems as though everything's going well. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments on the, the next steps for March 1st? All right, uh, thank you for that update. Uh, moving on then to 3.5, DPI Inclusive Services Assessment and Guide. Thank you. Um, we have wanted to start using and looking at this tool over a year ago already, and then COVID hit and it's sort of been put on the back burner. Um, we knew this was an issue that we needed to deal with, and um, so hopefully everybody got a chance at least to look at the tool itself. So obviously there's like over 10 pages of different uh, items to checklist on what the libraries can be doing. Um, and this is really intended for board as well, but the staff as well. Um, so what, I guess uh, first I should open it up for comments. Um, and then as far as a process, what we're thinking is that the staff could meet and, and sort of go through where we think that we are and then present this to the board next month on to start to prioritize areas that maybe we aren't doing at this point. But that's kind of how the process that I saw moving forward is for us to take a first look at it. Because some of these things you wouldn't as board members know what we're doing internally anyway. But I guess I'll open it up just to hear comments. Any thoughts or questions on the report? Uh, Nancy Manchin. Um, I just wanted to comment that um, I went through it and counted up. There are t 22 areas and over 300 mm -hmm. questions. So um, for Melissa and committees who go at answering, that's really a, a large task and, and, an, and an important one too. And also that board members are listed there, number one, you know, to be familiar with the documents. So we're on our way to assessing. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, my thought is that it was another example of just how well libraries just gather information and present information and uh, I agree with Nancy, I was a little overwhelmed by the number of questions, but they really ended up making me think even more. So I, I guess we sort of look to your guidance, Garrett, of how mm -hmm. you envision us uh, moving forward. With yeah, I, so I think uh, Melissa and Cheryl and I will meet and try to figure out how to um, sort of do our own self-assessment and then present that to the board at the next meeting. But it did give, I'm glad you guys had a chance to take a look at this document, it's super, uh, detailed and there's a lot of work to be done on it. Um, it's a great document and, um, that they put together for us to use. I'm so happy we don't have to come up with this sort of a thing from scratch. Um, but so then the next thought I guess would be that we present this at the, we don't have a meeting in March due to spring break, but we would present this by April. So we'll try to get this to the trustees as soon as we can get that accomplished and then they can start to look at that themselves. And I guess I, I think the next step after that would be that uh, you guys start to give us some priority areas that we need to work on that we're not perhaps doing yet. Great, all right, thank you. Oh yes, Nancy. Nancy. 
I just had one more comment. And as I was going through it, I thought um, that it's also a useful document for our committees. I had the art committee in mind, but uh, this is a document that, that can help guide and direct conversations within our committees also. Wonderful, thank you. All right, uh, and then with that, we'll go to 3.6, the 2021 holiday calendar. And I will turn this over to our library director. Uh, just uh, Sydney, thank you for putting together um, the list of holidays and so on. So at the end of the year, you can see we always struggle with holidays over the weekends. Normally when you have a Saturday holiday, we bump that back to the Friday before that is taken off. And the same with Sundays, we take the Monday following off. So you'll see a few of those dates in there. Um, and then I guess I'd open it up to questions at this point, but otherwise, uh, thank you, Sydney, for putting that together. Did anyone have any questions about the proposed uh, recognized holidays for the 2021 fiscal year? Would someone like to take a motion to approve our new 2021 holiday schedule? Okay. Just trying to see. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like Sherry Speth, I believe, made a motion and is someone second? All right. <laughs> We're getting some interesting noises, but uh, <laughs> all right. All, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Um, motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're moving on to the director's report. So for 4.1, we're gonna. I'm gonna turn this over to Melissa for services and programming report. So I'll just give you uh, some programming highlights. Uh, what's coming up in the next six weeks or so, um, and what we've done. Um, so we have been really successful. It sounds like we have a little bit of an echo feedback. Sorry, everybody. Okay. <laughs> I think it's better now. Um, so coming up uh, today, actually, we're doing a take and make chili virtual cooking session with Marilyn Montemayor. Um, Marilyn has done a number of cooking classes at the library that have been really successful, and it's something that our staff love planning with her and have missed uh, since COVID times. Um, so they had this great idea to basically film it like a cooking show and have the, the basic ingredients available as a take-home kit like we've been doing with all of the crafting kits for kids um, since the pandemic. And we had um, slots available for 20 people and they filled up within two days. So <laughs> um, I think people are really excited about it and um, I hope it goes well. And then we are continuing um, along those lines to do those take and make kits uh, for kids. And we have one right now that we, again, we ran out of all 50 kits uh, within a couple of days for making a snow volcano. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a science experiment you could do outside with the snow. There's some food coloring and all of the ingredients you need to make a snow volcano. Very exciting stuff. Um, for the entire month of March, we are doing our Peeps Diorama Contest, which we have done in the past. This one will be virtual this time. So um, we've had some really amazing submissions in past years. Basically, you use a shoebox and Peeps to uh, create fun dioramas. Um, and then <laughs> we run that through spring break and choose a winner um, at the end. This year, we're doing a virtual version of Wintergreen. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with that program, um, I believe this is the fourth or fifth year we've done it. Um, and that is really, it's a day of programming around um, the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Even if spring doesn't really come here until May, we do it in March anyways, um, just to get beat those winter blues a little bit. Um, so, there's going to be a number of virtual programs that day on seed starting. Uh, Marilyn will be doing another cooking class for us. Uh, urban homesteading. 
uh, environmental stewardship with the Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership, and then a few uh, STEM, virtual STEM classes for kids, one on um, measuring sunlight with a photoresistor using an Arduino, um, and a, another um, Arduino-based program as well. So we're excited about that. There's been some, some good registration for that already. Um, the Optimist Club is doing a spring break activity make and take kit with us as well. That will be available starting at the end of March. And then I mentioned last time the new um, racial justice book discussion group that um, Judge Natasha Corey is facilitating for us. We had our first session a couple weeks ago um, and it was really successful. Thank you, Meg, for that suggestion of doing breakout rooms in Zoom. That worked really well. We ended up doing um, two breakout rooms of 12 people each, and that was just the right size to get good discussion going. And then we came back in and, and shared all of our thoughts as a group. Um, the next one will be uh, meeting in two weeks, just a little less than two weeks, the second Tuesday of March. Uh, the book we'll be discussing is Homegoing by Ya Jassi, a fiction book, but really excellent. Um, there is still some space in that one, but it's filling fast. And um, that's all I have, unless there's any questions. Any Mo other questions or comments? Melissa, did you want to mention the radio show too with uh, John? Yes, I um, I haven't mentioned that yet because I'm I'm I know there's some debate on the go live date for it. Okay. Um, but I think that we've talked about the launch of this need radio project uh, with the board in the past, uh, maybe a few months ago. Um, John Tully is a fairly recent hire. He's been with me for about a year now. Um, and he has experience, years of experience working in community radio. Um, so he had this fantastic idea for, um, given where we're at with the pandemic, to launch a community radio out of need. And it's actually uh, surprisingly, especially if you have someone who already knows what they're doing with that kind of thing, uh, the tools out there make it really easy and relatively inexpensive to basically create your own web-based radio station. So um, right now we're in the process of developing a whole slate of programming for that. Um, and we'll be working with people out in the community, some of our community partners to be creating radio shows around that. But right now, um, John and Jeannie Gartman have been working with Lisa Vihos, our uh, poet laureate, to create a poetry on the air show. They've recorded three uh, shows so far and they're going to start airing those, um, I believe next week. So look out for some information from Josh on Facebook about that. Um, and then we also have, for the times that we're not gonna have on air shows, we'll be streaming music uh, that's part of the Mead Library music collection. So um, we're really excited about it. There's a lot, I think a lot of potential and I'm, I'm really excited to see where we go with the radio project. For those of you who have gone from the uh, main floor down to the staff area on the first on the bottom basement floor, John Tully is also the artist who uh, put the mural out the Alice in Wonderland mural on the wall. Um, it's amazing. So very talented guy. Uh, moving on, then 4.2, uh, Cheryl did not have a support services report. They've kind of been working on the same things uh, since last time. Um, and then I'll move into 4.3, which is building uh, projects. That's uh, maintenance, which is under me. Just a few things that Greg wanted to point out. There's a um, document attached to board docs, but if you go down to uh, numbers four, uh, five and six, um, we are hoping that the vendor will be able to install the fencing in early March that we've been talking about for about four or five months now. Uh, Maeve, was, you had requested especially we get that generator covered up in the front area. That's not uh, the most attractive thing to look at as you walk into the library. So we hope that that project will be done um, within the next couple of weeks. And then the other big thing that we're looking at right now is furniture replacement. Um, we have some pieces of furniture that are worn out. We have some others that um, we're having cleaning issues with. And we also have 
further the friends uh, that had purchased a couch about four or five years ago um, were sort of moving away from uh, furniture where you have a lot of people sitting close together and in close proximity. Um, we don't think that that's going to, that anything with COVID is going to change over the next few years. So um, we needed an update anyway, so we're gonna be moving through some of that furniture and we'll be talking to the board as we get through that as well as the foundation um, to fund those projects. So those are things that we're sort of inventorying right now and trying to figure out what we're gonna do with. So, and then uh, last on the director's report would be monthly statistics. Um, I think everything is sort of uh, going in the same trajectory that it has been. We still have another this month and one more month that we're sort of in this COVID um, state. And then COVID unfortunately becomes the norm where our stats have all been uh, sort of deflated compared to normal times. Um, I guess any questions about our statistics that we've kept? It looks like uh, th there, are, there are no questions. Okay. So, uh, so then moving on then to the, our liaison reports, uh, just uh, turning this over to Nancy Manchin for any updates on the Monarch Library System. Thank you, Maeve. Um, the Monarch Library trustees met on February 9th. Um, a strategic, strategic planning um, session is going on using a tool and we have been asked for input into that. So the, uh, that's forward thinking and, and assessing. Um, also the uh, job descriptions are being uh, updated for, um, for Monarch and that's also happening. Monarch Library, the library system I should say, published its annual report and I thought as Mead is one of the 23 libraries and Sheboygan County, one of the four that you'd be interested in seeing um, in addition to what Mead does, what's happening in that larger group. Um, circulation last year, 2.4 million items. That's very good. Um, among the children we had in the system over 1 million minutes of reading. And that, so that's a good uh, st statistic to know. Um, there were very close to 500,000 items shared um, between, or I should be among, says between, but among all the libraries. <laughs> uh, also um, the digital collection, um, over 300,000. So. Um, applause to Mead and the other 22 libraries for what they've done. Um, a comparison of statistics from 2019 and th 2020, um, in one perspective, statistics, of course, have dropped because of COVID, but in the other perspective, um, services have continued and done very well in spite of the fact that we had to deal with um, the COVID. So that's it for, for the Monarch system. Great, thank you, Nancy. Anyone have any questions or comments for Nancy? I remember, um, you know, when, when I first heard about the whole uh, plan for how the Monarch system board would meet, and because we're now 34 libraries, there's a lot of travel that used to be part of these meetings. And I think one of the benefits for you, Nancy, is that you've been able to really be able to do some of these meetings virtually. Because once upon a time, you were like on the road for a couple hours before showing up for a meeting. <laughs> so, so that's one of the benefits. Uh, it'll be interesting to see as time goes on whether or not uh, they will continue the option of virtual. For you, I hope so. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I have to say that um, I always enjoyed, before we weren't meeting in person, going to the different libraries because, you know, they all have their own personalities. There's wonderful artwork. The people who are working there are, are so hospitable and, and helpful that I'm, I miss that part of it, actually. <laughs> Well, the fingers crossed and toes crossed that you can get to that point again, maybe by the end of this year. 
So uh, thank you again for representing Mead Public Library um, every month on that uh, board. Uh, it is so good to get your input and we know that you speak uh, very strongly about the, the wishes and the needs of Mead Public Library. So thank you, Nancy. Uh, moving on then to the uh, 5.2 Mead Public Library Foundation. Uh, it did meet uh, last, uh, actually yesterday, and I just wanted to share uh, an update with all of you that uh, Kathy Norman, who's also on our trustee board, uh, she was elected president of the foundation uh, in the previous meeting. And then yesterday, uh, because she had been vice president, we elected uh, John Donovan as vice president. Some of you may know him in, um, in the city of Sheboygan. So uh, that uh, entity uh, uh, will now have some, a, a good team to lead it forward uh, in this uh, new year of 2021. Uh, the other highlights from the foundation meeting is the fact that there is a lot of interest in trying to have an in-person Wisconsin Academy event, perhaps sometime in the fall. Uh, and then if, you know, things uh, with uh, public health seem to suggest that that's not a wise step, uh, the foundation will look into an alternative um, option for that type of programming. Uh, and the same for the Yuletide uh, reception in December. There's great interest in, in having that wonderful tr tradition come back, but it will kind of depend on where we are with uh, public health issues. I'm just looking over at uh, our library director, Garrett, to see if there's any other key detail that I needed to share no, from the foundation. Are. But I think those were the main highlights. Uh, next up, uh, 5.3, the Friends of uh, Mead Public Library, and I will... Uh, turn this over to our, to Sydney Main. I think Hello. she's, oh, there she the is. Friends actually, um, the friends actually did not meet this month. Um, there wasn't a lot of business and so they decided not to. Um, but I will report, uh, because it just happened today, that the friends have agreed to um, host a furniture sale to kind of um, help us with offloading some of the excess furniture that we have at Mead right now. Um, as we've had a replacement furniture put in. Um, so that will be a nice, um, a nice way for us to be able to open up all of those um, meeting spaces. That's all. Sydney, also wasn't there a book sale um, scheduled for April? Yeah, so the book sale is scheduled for April. Um, they have dates selected and are moving forward with that, but in the, um, in, in the possibility that uh, it doesn't, it's, it's not able to go forward, they have backup dates of May selected as well. Great. Any questions or comments for Sydney? Uh, if you could also just share with the uh, wonderful friends that the additional signage in their bookshop right at the entrance seems to have garnered a lot more interest in people stopping by and purchasing some of the books. So, uh, or maybe it's just everyone's feeling like spring is really here and they need to stock up on a more personal collection of books. But it looks, it looks very active uh, the last few times I've been going into the library. So, um, with that, our upcoming meetings are, we have no meeting in March, so our next meeting will be um, April 22nd. Uh, at 3 p.m. And at this time, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, so Ma moved. Yeah, Meg Albrink has moved. Is there a second? And then I'll second. Mary Lynn on who seconds? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to oppose. So thank you all for a very uh, uh, good meeting and uh, may you have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mae. Bye-bye. Yeah, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks.